Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, I a couple months ago I started building um, this sim racing rig over here, and uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a video about like how I built it and how I went about it. Um, mostly because I had somebody ask me about it on Instagram, and I kind of exploded with all the videos and stuff that I took. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, I kind of did an Instagram story for it, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to cut together the footage that I took, which is not great, but it should give you an idea of, like, what it takes to build something like this. Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you, you notice I'm holding pieces of paper. I'll get better screenshots of this to show you guys, but basically, make a plan. Like, decide, like, how your setup is gonna come together. And like I said, I'll get a screenshot of this so you can actually like look at it. But like, one of the biggest things that I did was lay out, like draw out exactly what I wanted to do before I did it. And that helped me a lot because what you're gonna see in the footage is that I actually went through a change somewhere in this um, design. I changed up a major part of it to try to get some better structural rigidity and some, some coolness. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing a voiceover for this one, so it'll be my first voiceover, so bear with me if it sucks. But, uh, come along with me and let's learn how to build a wooden sim racing rig. I'll also make a video talking about the setup of the peripherals that I'm using, but if you're just wanting the, like, 30 seconds, it's a TMX Pro. Uh, it's the TP3A pedals or something, and the Sparco uh mod handbrake from thrustmaster and then i did custom 3d print uh base for a new wheel and then i also made a button box for that wheel and shifter paddles and everything and if people are interested in that i can make a video about that i did also kind of do a little bit of filming for that and i can talk about in detail how that works but anyway that's not the purpose of this video the purpose of this video is how to learn how to make a wooden sim rig Let's go. All right, so the first step when you are trying to build yourself a sim rig is that you want to try to find yourself some inspiration. Try to find some pictures of what somebody else did. Try to find, you know, images of what you want to build yours after. Um, it'll give you kind of an idea of like the basic look or the basic shape. The other thing that you can try to do is go to your car, whatever your car is, and try to measure out, you know, how far away stuff is, or at least sit in it and get a feel for it. And then um, what you'll see that I did is made like a cardboard mock-up of it so I could check that my design works. But anyway, visualize what you want first. So what's on the screen right now is a couple examples of images that I followed to make mine. And my design is based off of Kame Tricks. Uh, design that was my original like target goal and you'll see I kind of strayed away from that a little bit but all credit to him for being like the initial catalyst for my build okay so now that you have an idea of what your wooden rig should look like draw it out on a piece of paper so what you'll see is that I have like three different pieces of paper that I have here. One of them is just like a concept drawing piece of paper. Here it is. Um, so you'll see on this concept piece of paper, I just kind of drew out like a general plan. Like, what do I want to do? How do I want it to look? You know, et cetera. Uh, that's, a, that's an important step in my opinion. And you can see over on the right side, you'll see like I labeled a pedal box and the steering wheel and some boards and like the different way I envisioned it all going together. And, uh, you know, it's just important to have a good place to start. Next, after deciding my concept, I drew out basically the layout and I measured everything out and I used the grid system on the graph paper to like make it true to size. Um, so I laid out exactly what I wanted it to be in the different areas. So you'll see that I labeled the boards like A, B, C, like F, etc. Um, I labeled those so that I could use a cut list. So the cut list should be on the screen now. And you can see in the cut list that I have those same A, B, C, D, E um, boards and I have the dimensions that I need to make the boards and how many of them I need to make and then the allocation tab is like that I actually cut them so I filled that in as I cut them out 
Then on the bottom of this page, you'll see that I allocated it for the pieces of wood that I was going to buy. So I calculated how many pieces of wood do I need to buy to make all these cuts that I need. And then, of course, remember there's a little bit of a fudge factor because when you cut a board, it's cut by the width of your saw blade. So you want to have a little bit of margin at the end so you can see how I labeled the waste numbers at the ends. That's how much wood was going to be, quote, wasted. Um, and so anyway, that's the moral of the story. Uh, I chose that I, to make the best use of wood, I chose to buy... 96 inch long pieces of 2x4 to use for my setup and as you can see uh, the piece of plywood that I ended up buying my original goal was to buy a 96 inch piece of plywood but I ended up uh, getting two half sheets so two 48 inch long sheets um, which you should be able to see in the cuts that I make but anyway the moral of the story is make yourself a little bit of a plan if you're making it with metal, great. Still make a plan. Highly recommended. If you're buying one, great. I mean, you know, there are plans out there. I didn't explore buying any of them because I just thought it was something I could make on my own. But, hey, if that's what you want to do, more power to you. So one thing that you're going to have to work out pretty quick is what you want to use for your C. So what you'll see on the screen is a snapshot from Instagram or something. I don't remember. Anyway, um, I took a picture of the day I uh, got these seats. Uh, I was just surfing uh, Facebook Marketplace or whatever, and I happened to find a set of Miata seats that are, have some recovering that happened to match the leather of my Miata, and that was kind of the starting point for this whole build. Once I found those, I knew I could get started. Um, but, you know, you can obviously find anything you want. If you're cool and have a Sparco or some other thing sitting around your house that you're not using, obviously use that. If not, you can really use any seat, anything you can find. If you if you aren't particular, you can find somebody throwing away some junk seats for a couple bucks. Um, you know, I got a little bit particular and I wanted like a Miata or a 370Z seat. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have also done a, a C, Audi C5 S6 seat or you know whatever C5 seat. But that really doesn't fit the race car vibe, but it still would have been part of my collection. So anyway, whatever. Find yourself a seat. Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you can buy some cheap thing off Amazon or if you want. Uh, I don't really recommend buying a Sparco specifically for this unless you got bunches of money, in which case you're, you're cool. Like, good job. Um, but anyway, find yourself a seat. Uh, make sure it's comfortable to sit in. Make sure it doesn't like gross you out to sit in it because you're going to spend a lot of time in it. Okay, now that you've gotten your seat, uh, it's pretty much time to just start cutting. Um, so you made your plan, you got your stuff, you got your wood, and now it's time to start cutting pieces. Um, so what you'll see is just some little screen caps from my process, but basically cut out your pieces of wood and then lay them out. What I did is I made a cardboard like a mock-up on the ground, and then I laid the boards down on that as I cut them to like basically make sure that everything fit in its shape, and then I progressively started gluing it piece by piece. One thing that you'll want to make sure of when you're doing this is to continuously do test fits. So you'll see a lot of these, it's hard to tell from the picture, but I just laid out the pieces of wood after I would make a cut and make sure that everything fit. I also 3D printed this little board square. You can also buy them at the store, but uh, you just want to make sure that you try to keep your boards perfectly at 90 degrees, otherwise you'll... Uh, end up with an uneven box and you'll be very sad. So in this shot I'm measuring out where the screw holes need to be for the pedal box so I can hold the pedal box in place. It's pretty important. I didn't add any adjustability into my pedal box and I'm glad I didn't uh, now because it's really kind of difficult to move this big wooden thing on its side to get to the adjustability points. So overall just measure it once, set it once, and just count on the adjustability in your seat to make it okay. So in this section you can see the screws that have been put in and I had to make a change here um, from the original board document you can see this blue icon that came in there I had to add a board because it was flexing weird 
So that's why you'll see these extra screw marks here right in the middle of the board. So here you can see that I made my little cardboard mock-up here for the end plates. And you can see that I went through, I made basically I made a grid system and I thought about like what way do I want to lay out the end plates? Like what do I want them to look like? And so eventually I settled on this design that you can see here. And so this is the design that I decided to try to make. And so then I cut that piece out on the cardboard then I taped all of the cardboard pieces together so I could kind of see what it would look like. After I decided that I was happy with the design in cardboard, I started cutting my 3 quarter inch MDF to match the shape that I was after. Also, if you look closely at the MDF, you may be able to see that I drew the same grid system on it, so I made sure that my cuts were precise. Um, it was a little bit overkill, but it seemed like it worked out really well and it achieved the shape that I wanted. And I also made sure that I could cut both pieces of MDF at once. So I would have a perfectly uniform design. I just made sure my saw blade, my uh, reciprocating saw was able to cut through both together. Here you can see what I ended up with for my steering wheel plate. I did this little angle because I thought it would look cool and cause it to slide well across the other surface while keeping it level. But I wouldn't say this step is ultimately necessary. Uh, it was fun, but I probably wouldn't do it again if I had the choice. I'd just make a straight cut. So the color scheme I went with for my sim rig is matching the mahogany mica of my Miata. Um, so I tried to aim for a purple that matches that. So this is the color matching choice. I also aim to match the wood grain interior, but I don't have any pictures of that. So at this point, uh, everything, all of the pieces are done. So I just begin taping and preparing to paint. So you'll notice I did go for like a wood stain and purple color scheme. So first I did the stain, second I did the purple. And uh, I'm pretty much just going to let it roll through the pictures I have here because I've done a lot of talking. And the moral of the story is I stained and painted it and it took way longer than I thought. As you can see, I kind of missed on the Miata purple. Um, I did see that I could buy a color match spray paint can for like 20 bucks a can, and I decided not to make that financial investment. So it's close enough, in my opinion. It worked out all right. And once the paint dried, it was just time for final assembly. So I uh, put all the pieces together and set it up, and uh, that was pretty much it. Um, I will say that I didn't really cover it really well, but I used nuts and bolts to hold the end plate to the box, to hold the steering wheel plate uh, to the end plate, and to hold the seat to the box. So I can remove or adjust those things at any time, um, although I haven't done much with adjusting the steering wheel mounting plate. At least it does have the ability. And I did make a little cutout for the cables, which you should be able to see in the final pictures as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, I did also end up building a handbrake box, uh, which I will do another video about, about how I built that as an add-on, but that's pretty much it. Be riding on the front of your bike